Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish, and this is the Red Elevator. Today, we are going to do a deep dive. Finally, I'm going to reveal my family room. I have completely transformed it, and I just can't wait to show you what I've done. So follow me. Welcome to my new family room. I'm so excited to share this room with you guys. Many of you have seen little bits and parts of this room, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, but today we're gonna to reveal this in its entirety. This room was literally a year in the making. And the reason is that, well, uh, Nina is the last priority on her list of clients. So it does take longer for an interior designer to design their own spaces because they're always thinking about all of their clients. So I can't wait to share all the interesting details with you. So what have I done to really transform the space? And that is that first and foremost, you lay your rug down. Once your rug is down, the rest of the room comes together. You guys know how important it is to put thought into the kind of rug that you're using. And of course, we are on the Marion rug designed by yours truly, Nina Takish for Ruggable. Everything that I'm going to mention today is going to be linked in the description section, so don't even think about it. Relax, watch, enjoy, and if you're interested in any of these items, they're going to be linked for you below. But the Marion rug is a rug that really was inspired by my trip to Paris, my many trips to Paris, I should say. And the folds and the lines and etc., everything that's within this rug is really reminiscent of what the city of Paris looks like. So this rug, to me, stated um, and dictated what I was going to be doing in the rest of the room. I should also mention that if you guys are interested in interior design consultation, I'm on Zoom. That's right. I can easily be booked for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and everything is linked below. And I'm happy to meet some of you. I've met already a ton of you, and I really enjoy our interaction. So thank you again for booking me. So it all began when I knew that I needed to rip these floors out and put in brand new floors. We've already talked about it, so I'm not gonna get into it, but uh, what we did is that I removed all the floors that were here before that were in a gray stain, and instead, we put this beautiful herringbone white oak floor. These are engineered, the rest of the house is real three-quarter inch wood, but in this room, I decided that engineered was better because the products that are out there are actually quite good and engineered today has the ability to be sanded and looks really good. So I've got brand new engineered floors. I wanted them to be in the color of the Parisian apartments because after all, um, we love Paris, right? So I knew that that was important to me. It needs to be classical in architecture. It needs to be timeless because we're not chasing the fads. And um, once that was determined, it was easy to drop in my rug, the Marion, which is in camel and ivory, and the floors have this, you know, delicious caramel, caramel color to them. As many of you might know, I have a relationship with Anthropology as the ambassador, and therefore this sofa is a must. This is called the Seguero sectional sofa. It is so comfortable. Of all the sofas I've had, and I've had many in this room, in this exact room, my children, of course, now that they're in college, are telling me, Mom, I can't believe you waited for us to leave before you got the comfortable couch. So I'm sorry, kids. Please forgive mama, but I didn't realize that comfort and style could come together. So I'm gonna take this quick second to ask you guys to subscribe. Now, I hate it when people ask me to subscribe. It's annoying, I get it. And it's important. It's important because if you guys want me to continue to give you content, it's important that you um, help me just a little bit and subscribe to the channel so that we can bring you the content regularly you know it takes a lot it takes a great team a big team to produce these and i would really appreciate the um, subscription so if you haven't subscribed already please make sure and do so and don't forget the bell and i'm swiveling into action here this is the cb2 muir swivel chair it's this gorgeous camel colored velvet and i absolutely love it i've paired it with the jack side table this is also cb2 i have to really take this moment to let you know how interesting and excited I am about the pieces that I'm seeing on CB2. They are phenomenal. This marble piece, typically, if I were to go to one of the high-end showrooms, which I frequent for clients, something like this would be close to $10,000. I'm not kidding. Why? Because it's a solid piece of marble that's been carved. And guess what? This is a solid piece of marble that's been carved. 
and you get it for a fraction, literally like less than a tenth of the price you can get something as a designer as this. So when I saw this table, the Jack's table on CB2, I said, I, I have to have it because this is worth every, I mean, it's just phenomenal. So trust me when I say these are great pieces and I just love my swivel. I think it's great. And I love putting things unexpectedly in a room. When you're designing your space, don't just, you know, think inside the box. You got to think outside the box. You got to put, you know, a, a chair here and a table there and sort of bring the harmony and the balance to the room. My credenza is Leanne Ford from Crate and Barrel. I love it because again, it's got the curvature that is important because everything else was more linear. My rug is linear, of course, the lines in it are linear. And then you've got the nice curvature. The sofa is more of a rectangle. So you want to have a mix of, you can't have everything be angular and you can't have everything be rounded. Just be cognizant of the pieces that you're choosing and what shape they're in and try and do a good 50-50 or 60-40 mix, depending on what you love more. I like to decorate things in a room, but I don't like to over-decorate. The power of restraint is critical here. So I have four pieces on this credenza. I could have gone hard and had more but I don't want to. And I want them to be of large scale. I don't want a lot of little knickknacks. I think it just looks cheap when you do that. So be very, very careful as to what you're placing on a credenza, which is the focal point under the television in the room. So here I have a couple pieces from Hager. These are sourced from vintage finds when I go to estate sales. I've got my uh, marble bowl, which I've had for a long time. And then I've had the CB2 links which by the way, are one of my favorite links, I think of all the links that are out there and they're heavy, they're good, and everything will be linked in the description section. And I also have a place for people to put their telephones. The first thing that happens when people come to my home is, do you have a charger? And I don't wanna see people's cords all over the place and they don't, and, and t t it just doesn't look nice and it's a tripping hazard. So I put my courant charger and multiple phones can be charged of any kind, whether it's iPhone or what the other brands are, I don't even know they can go literally on the cute courant. So I love that. I love having it in the room for guests. Here I've got a gorgeous little poof. These are from Soho Home. I love floating them around. They move around depending on what needs to be done in the room. Sometimes I'll sit on the egg chair, I'll put my feet up, or sometimes there'll be people over playing video games and they'll sit here. So these are really useful and great extra seating. The chair is a vintage piece, uh, the egg chair, which I love, mid-century, the true mid-century piece. I love, as you guys know, bringing in mid-century pieces and mixing them with new. This is absolutely new. This is very old. And together, they make a great statement. My coffee table was sourced from First Dibs. So there's a great marketplace by the name of First Dibs for those that are not familiar with it. And you can find anything from new to vintage pieces that are really spot on. Uh, they tend to be a little expensive, so you just have to be cognizant of that. I did these built-in bookcases. We did it with the Nina Touch Latch. Beautiful system here. And I built these in because I wanted to display some of the things that have meaning to me. And again, I have some of my books here. Now, this isn't a bookcase. This is a decorative area because many people are going to say, you don't have enough books in your bookcase. But I like my bookcases to not only be a reflection of what's important to me in terms of what I like to read, art books, but I also like them to have, you know, decorative objects that um, are pretty to me and, and really keep a balance and they're not just heavy. If it was a library, then I would have, a, you know, a bookcase full of books, but it's not a library. It's a place to relax. It's a place to have things that are decorative. And there's lots of different things here that have meaning to me. For example, this is um, a beautiful vase from Rosenthal. Uh, I do collect Rosenthal vases from um, Germany, and I just love how this looks like it's been smashed in, but of course it's not. And a little, um, you know, art pieces. This is an art piece that I absolutely adore. And I've got, you know, vintage vessels and finds. This actually I found in Palm Springs. I've got the, my favorite book from Helmut Newton here. And, uh, and, you know, and the list goes on. So. I do appreciate really curating and taking the time to display beautiful items, not only for me to enjoy, but also for my guests. This is my morning room. It is part of the family room. It's open to the bar and then open to the kitchen to give you a point of reference. And again, the herringbone white oak um, floors are as well present in this room because this is one open space. 
And this is where we basically eat. We have a formal living room, but we're there only on special occasions. So this room is very special because it's round and in construction, round means money and time. So I really appreciate having a round room because I know how difficult they are to build because how do you put windows in a round, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to get a round fixture. I've had this for a while. This is uh, by Corbett Lighting. And then I have a round, um, you know, marble table underneath. This is your classic mid-century table. And uh, it's called a tulip table because of the base, which looks like a tulip. And then I've got my CB2 chairs. This is the Foley. I love these chairs because they are very architectural. The fabric is very forgiving. I was worried that we were going to get them dirty, but I, I feel like they clean easily and I don't have to be too crazy about it. So that's what's great about CB2 is that, you know, I didn't pay an arm and a leg for these chairs. So, so if somebody spills tomato sauce, like it's not going to kill me. I mean, it'll hurt my heart, but it's not going to be the end of the world, especially for a room that's used daily for eating. Lastly, I wanted to point out my vase. I love this one. This is also CB2. I love the way the colors are really blending in, not only with the tulip table, but also with the chairs, with the floors, with everything that is in this room. So the idea really was to bring earth tones into the room to make the outdoor, which is literally right here, give it a sense of indoor-outdoor vibe. We've got these big bifold windows um, to my left, which allow the exterior loggia to be opened. And then this becomes one giant space. We do that over the summer and believe it or not, it's June and it is gloomy. So at some point when the weather is better, we're gonna open the bifold um, doors and the entire room can be transformed into an indoor outdoor oasis. I want to know what your favorite item in this room is of everything that I've sourced. Is there one particular piece that really grabs your attention? I'm very, very interested in finding out. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this episode, a very special episode of The Red Elevator, where I finally got to share a project that is wholeheartedly mine. And I hope you enjoyed the tour. And I can't wait to see you guys next week on what's going to be an incredible episode with the plant daddies. So I was able to get the best tree in the world. It's what every designer is looking for, how I styled it in the house. That's right, I'm now a horticulturist. Is that what they call them? I'm going to bring a live tree in this house. I've never done that before because they kill everything, but we're gonna find out how to take care of this beautiful black olive tree. So make sure and ring that bell so that you don't miss that episode because you do not want to miss this one. Thanks again, and I can't wait to see you guys next week on The Red Elevator.